Today's video is brought to you by Upstart. Hey brother, Ben, last week we were looking at how the trolls might be the true villains in Frozen 1. So this week I decided, hmm, maybe I should look into Frozen 2 as well. And guess what? It is King Runard, like just straight up, very bad guy, very clear cut. Unlike your ice, am I right? Ayo! Nailed it. Was that a jab at me? <laughs> yeah. That said, I still found King Runard's plan to be just about as confounding as Hans. Okay, so he builds a dam and says that the dam will hurt the North Uldra and force them to rely upon him and Arendelle, right? Okay, that makes sense. But then he just openly attacks them anyway? Like, what was the point of the dam? Which like, not for nothing, just seems like a tidal wave waiting to happen that's gonna wipe out your castle. And the river you're stopping seems like it flows directly to Arendelle. So by like blocking it, are you potentially going to dry up the fjord your city is on? Actually, that's not a real threat because it turns out that fjords are just valleys that have been carved by glaciers and then are flooded by oceans. I came for the theories, I stayed for the geology lesson. <laughs> that's why you've probably heard the phrase this channel rocks on fire today. I actually didn't know how fjords were formed or anything like that before researching this specific video, but in the process of learning how fjords and dams and all that stuff works, I actually learned a very interesting story about the dam in Frozen 2. And let me tell you, this story not only reveals why they chose to use a dam in Frozen 2, but also reveals its real world historical significance. So today we learn the truth about the dam in Frozen 2. Guys, before we dive on in, I need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Upstart. Financial responsibility is a big deal, and before you do anything, I would of course always encourage you to do your homework and make sure it's a smart fit for you. But have you ever been making payments on something for what feels like forever and it just seems like there's no end in sight? Often this is because you have a high interest rate and only a portion of what you're paying is actually going towards the principal, which is what you actually owe. If that's the case for you, or you just have too many bills to take care of, or your credit just isn't great, Upstart might be the right choice for you. They go beyond the traditional credit score and take into account important things like you. Things like a steady job history or your education can yield a smarter rate. Plus, they make it fast and simple to check your rate and it's only a soft pull so it won't affect your credit unless you accept. And if and when approved, most people get their funds the very next day. See why Upstart has a 4.9 out of 5 on Trustpilot and how low your rate can be by heading to upstart.com scb. Again, that's upstart.com scb. Link is in the description down below. All right, you guys, welcome to the crazy rabbit hole that so often is researching Frozen videos. Before I even started researching for this video, one question I've always had about Frozen 2 is, why did they decide to go with the dam for the movie at all? It seems like such an unusual way for the king to attack these people, especially when he's already planning on just attacking them the old fashioned way. Anyway, his in-universe reasoning is that the dam will weaken the North Uldra people's land and force them to rely on him and Arendelle for support. With the built-in bonus that when everyone gathers to celebrate the dam, he will be able to gauge their strength because all of their numbers will be present. Which if you ask me, I feel like he's being a little presumptuous about how excited people are about dams, but I don't know, maybe it's just me. But despite all this planning and the actual construction of the dam, he just then openly attacks them anyway so like what was the point like seriously do you think he just like forgot the first half of his plan i mean according to this map anna and elsa find where they built the dam and where arendelle is not exactly close to each other which means it must have taken some serious time and resources and manpower to construct the dam itself and like that's fine but completing the dam is like affirming your dedication to the long con which was probably gonna work like yeah it might take even a few more years years after the dam is built for all of its problems to start revealing themselves in the environment of the North Uldra people. But eventually it's gonna work. They're gonna need you. They're gonna have to rely on you. Attacking this guy was seriously as dumb as Hans telling Anna the plan. Like, dude, You'd already won! I mean, it's not like I'm rooting for him or anything, but whatever. The point is, as nonsensical as it was for the king to attack this guy 
in universe. The real world reason for choosing a dam in Frozen 2 was actually very clever on the part of the writers. As is the case with so many things in Frozen, the dam was not just some randomly chosen weapon of war, it was carefully selected and represents a real life dam and a real life feud. Specifically, the Alta Dam and the feud between the North Aldra people and the people of Arendelle is meant to represent the feud between the Sami people and the Norwegian government over the construction of the Alta Dam. In case you didn't know, the North Aldra people in Frozen 2 are based on the real life people, the Sami, who are the indigenous people of Scandinavia. And back in the 1970s, the NWREB, that's the Norwegian Water Resources and Electricity Board, proposed the construction of a dam on the Alta River to generate hydroelectric power, which sounds all fine and dandy except for two minor things. And by minor, I mean big. Number one, the river runs right through the reindeer herding grounds of the Sami people, and by building the dam, the river would effectively be gone. But the real kicker is that the resulting lake from the dam would have completely submerged the Sami village of Masi, which I hope I am pronouncing correctly. Now, as ever, when your city is being threatened with becoming the modern day Atlantis, this prompted Sami activists to try and get the project scaled down or canceled. And they were indeed initially successful at getting the project scaled down, at least to the point where their village wasn't going to be underwater. It doesn't seem like you should ever have to fight for that, but they did, and at least they got that far. But the dam was still going to fairly negatively impact the rest of their land. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I am by no means a Scandinavian history scholar or anything like that, but as I understand it, this was not exactly the first time the Norwegian government had marginalized the Sami people. And so, after they failed to get the dam canceled by bureaucratic means, they began to protest in earnest. One group that formed was by Norwegian environmentalists called the People's Action Group, and they actually built a stone wall blocking the construction road to the dam outside of Alta, which I personally think is hilarious. They literally built a dam on the road to halt the construction of the dam on the river. <laughs> Classic and effective. The irony of this group, however, was that their messaging was focused on saving the river rather than focusing in on the ethnic rights of the Sami people. And as a result, even though they had the support of some Sami people, a new group was formed, the Sami Action Group. And they organized their own secret protest, which involved setting up a tent outside of parliament and sending them an ultimatum saying that if they didn't halt the construction of the dam and recognize the rights of the Sami people, they were going to begin staging a hunger strike. And so the government refused. And the strike began, which caused a huge media frenzy, and they started getting a lot of support from the public. The strike, however, only lasted a single day before police went in and arrested everyone. Although I will say, by everyone, I mean it was seven people, and by arrested, I mean they were also released later that day. But this did not slow down the protesters at all. They immediately reset up the tent, restarted the hunger strike, and you will not believe it, five days later, they actually halted construction of the dam. Which like, hooray, victory! Job well done, everybody, pack it up. We're going home. Or so they thought. Indeed, both protests disbanded and the government even formed the Sami Rights Commission, which promised to look into Sami interests before resuming dam construction. Which sounds like a good step, but really it was kind of like a free pass for the government to say, hey look, we formed this group to look into these interests, so let's build this thing. Like seriously, before the commission that they formed actually did any research or released any reports, they were like, all right, let's start doing this again, we're gonna build. And this time, they were a little bit more prepared. They actually sent 10% of the nation's entire police force to Alta to prepare for the inevitable protesting. Which did indeed occur, and instead of a little rock wall, this time they built an ice wall. Which to me, personally, I'm imagining something like the Night's Watch in Game of Thrones, only on a much smaller scale. Or, even better, on exactly the same scale. Although you have to think at that point, that's a bigger dam than they were going to build in the first place, and they're probably causing all sorts of environmental issues. But the ice wall was only half the protest. The other half was 70 people chaining themselves to the ice wall. But like I said, lots and lots of police were there and they just removed the people, even the ones who chained themselves from the wall. And I will note that they did it in a very passive and peaceful way so as to not 
escalate any violence. But that is not the end of our story. Then there was another hunger strike and the protesters actually managed to send the case all the way up to the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court decided that the Sami people had no claims to those lands and that the dam was going to be built. Ah, uh, happy ending for, well, the Norwegian government and I guess everyone who's getting electricity from the power plant. The Sami, however, lost this battle. But, and let me be clear, this doesn't like excuse the marginalization of those people, the legacy of this particular controversy has yielded some positive results for them. This instance was actually the catalyst for a real sense of national identity and pride amongst the Sami people. And remember that report that never came out earlier? Well, eventually, like three years later, it did come out. I mean, construction had begun at that point, but the report was quite thorough and made lots of very pro-Sami suggestions, particularly concerning land rights, which actually led to a new amendment getting added to the Norwegian constitution. Said amendment ensures protection of the Sami language and culture and grants them greater representation in legislative branches of government. And actually, because of this process, just back in 2005, something called the Finnmark Act was passed, which granted 46 thousand square kilometers of land to the citizens of Finnmark County in Norway. Finnmark County is the northernmost area of Norway and where the Sami people live and yes, is also where the Alta Dam is. But somehow I doubt it's going to meet the same fate as the dam in Frozen 2. At least as long that is as the real world earth spirits continue their long-standing tradition of being rocks. But there you go, guys. That is the true story about the real life inspiration for the dam in Frozen 2 and the feud between the Northuldra people and the people of Arendelle. Then my question for you and everyone else is, are there any other little weird moments or things you didn't understand in Frozen or really any other Disney movie for that matter that you would like us to look into? Leave all of your thoughts in the towel section down below. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already and ding that bell so you don't miss any future Frozen content from us. If you want some more deep dives into the Norwegian culture that they explore in the Frozen movies, I totally recommend this ice harvesting video that we made or this awesome video about the wood stacking scene in Frozen 1 from quite a while ago, but it's still quite good. It's aged well. Anyway, Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.